Calls are mounting for an immediate ceasefire and peace talks amid renewed conflict between Israel and Palestine. Unexpectedly, the conflict in the Middle East escalated to unforeseen levels at the beginning of this month when Hamas, which is a Palestinian militant group that controls the densely populated Gaza Strip along Israel's border, launched an unprecedented attack on Israel from Gaza. This resulted in the tragic death of at least 1,400 Israelis. In response to the attack, Israel initiated a retaliatory bombardment of the Gaza Strip, declaring war against Hamas. Unfortunately, the retaliatory actions have claimed the lives of more than 2,300 Palestinians. Bahaitsu Dumelang, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are joined by Zoom by political analyst Dr. Jan Fenter to speak to us about the current conflict happening between Israel and Palestine as the situation gets tense day by day and lives continue to be lost. Dr. Fenter, thanks very much for joining us. Welcome. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Tabo. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated, uh, Doc. Uh, you know, um, the conflict between Israel and Palestine is one of the bloodiest and longest running in the world. I mean, there are intense feelings on both sides after decades of tragedy and numerous uh, failed bids for lasting peace. Maybe let us uh, start off the conversation with the, an explanation of the origins of the conflict between Israelis and uh, Palestinians. We know that, uh, you know, um, it dates back to the 19th century. I mean, it's been going on for some time now. Uh, it's been going on for centuries, literally. If you le read the Bible or the Talmud or the Quran, you get an understanding of how the Christians and the Jews and the Palestinians have been making war on each other for literally centuries. And it's been atrocities on all sides. But the modern war in Israel started with the British after the Second World War promising the same piece of land to both the Palestinians and the Jewish factions. So the same piece of land which we now call Israel has been promised to both the Jews and the Palestinians. And shortly after the Second World War, after peace was declared, a couple of days thereafter, the first war broke out between Israel in brackets and its Arab neighbors. And that war actually continues to this day in various forms, uh, various groups taking the lead and various people and various countries swearing that they will annihilate Israel, that they cannot abide the existence of a Jewish state. Now, the most recent conflict between Hamas comes at a very interesting juncture in history. And that is when several Arab states led by Saudi Arabia actually came to a point where they said, we will recognize Israel. Let's make peace in the Middle East. For the first time, some countries were going to form a partnership with the Israeli state, with the Jews, and try to embody a more peaceful approach to the resolution of the conflict, to a resolution of what do we do with two peoples, two uh, empires that has been fighting for centuries and ha th that fighting has actually been 
going nowhere. And now they wanted a more peaceful approach. And then Hamas attacked. And Hamas, that attack of Hamas was in such a, it attacked in such a way that Israel could not, not react. It had to react. Prof, um, I, I mean, Doc, uh, I, I want us to look at, uh, you know, I mean, you are touching on uh, some of the key events of the last hundred years in shaping up that part of the Middle East and, uh, you know, understanding why peace remains elusive. I mean, we saw in uh, 1948 the state of Israel, which was created there, sparking the first uh, Arab-Israeli war, as you said, that, uh, you know, um, uh, that actually resulted in just close to 750,000 Palestinians being displaced. But my question is, why is, uh, you know, peace remaining elusive uh, uh, in this instance? Uh, both parties in this conflict, since 1948, has been very hard line. Israel has taken the stance of, it's actually a military state. It has uh, made itself into a fortress. It has a very strong military uh, and a very strong uh, civil defense component to its society. Now, its neighbors, if you look at Iran, uh, is looking to arm itself with nuclear weapons, and Iran has sworn to eradicate Israel. Now, first there was the PLO that has lost relevance after the death of Yasser Arafat. And the PLO has largely been replaced by Hamas and Hezbollah, which are radical uh, Islamic jihadist groups. And they are also well armed. So both parties in this conflict has actually entrenched themselves in a military conflict that leaves very little room for discussion, very little room for dialogue. And they see the viewpoints of the other party as untenable. They see the viewpoints of the other party as a direct threat to their existence. So the Palestinians say or feel that the existence of Israel is a threat to their very existence and lives. And the Israelis feel that Palestinians in Israel or around Israel, backed by states like Iran, is a threat to their existence. Probably. So it's mm. the, there's a very wide um, gap between the two fighting factions. Dr. Fenter, I want us to take a quick uh, breather. Uh, we're going to continue the conversation after the ad break. I want us to touch on, uh, uh, you know, some of the developments that we saw Israel announcing uh, that it was preparing for a full scale invasion, uh, either via land, air or sea. I just want to get your thoughts on that after the ad break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabu Malukwani. If you've just tuned in before the ad break, we went through the historical context and the time of the conflict between Israel and Palestine with Dr. Jan Fenter. Let's now look at the current situation on the war. Dr. Fenter is still joining us virtually. Doc, thanks very much uh, for staying on. I want us to touch on uh, particularly looking at the announcement that was made by um, Israel uh, saying that uh, it will launch a full-scale invasion uh, via land, air and sea in Gaza. It's unclear what or when uh, that will happen. We know that uh, close to 1.1 million uh, Palestinians have been ordered to leave by Israel. Is it possible? 
the evacuation order by Israel is impossible. If you look at the wounded, uh, the sick, uh, women and children, I don't think uh, people in hospitals can move. They're not mobile. I think uh, Israel would like to remove civilians from the conflict. That would make it easier for them to get at Hamas. But I think uh, it's also a way for them to say later on, but we, we did our best. We, we tried our best. We tried to get the civilians out of harm's way. Uh, unfortunately, it, they, they stayed. They choose to stay. Hamas made them stay. So we are not responsible for the body count. Because when the invasion, uh, the promised invasion of Israel into Gaza happens, the body count will be high. Uh, Israel is involved in an asymmetric war with Hamas. That simply means that Hamas is a small, relatively poorly equipped force. Israel is a bigger, very much well-equipped military machine. And you can't fight something that isn't there. It's like hitting a, a flea with a fist. Uh, Hamas will in the built-up areas, in the Gaza uh, area, will inflict harm and casualties on Israel. But Israel, with its superior firepower, will inflict casualties on the civilian populace as well. Uh, don't call, and Hamas uh, bargained on this. Hamas knew that Israel... Yes, Doc, you can... Hamas, could, knew hmm. that, Hamas knew that Israel will invade Gaza. They knew that Israel will bomb Gaza. And in the eyes of the world, this will be, and it is, a crime against human rights that so many civilians are dying. Doc, I want us to move to this. Now, the conflict between the two nations is a hybrid of political, historical and religious tensions. But, uh, you know, having a look at the historical and aspects, I want us to talk about the religious aspects. I mean, you did touch on it earlier on, saying that when you go back to the Bible, then you will be able to understand. But, you know, there's quite mixed messaging. Some are saying that, look, this is nothing to do with uh, uh, religious matters. It's just pure political, the issues of land and all these things. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just worried that at the center of this is the, you know, um, civilian and children are casualties, uh, you know, or in, in both countries, and everyone is somewhat displaced or others are killed. I mean, how do we then navigate this as the international community? Unfortunately, uh, in matters like this, it's not purely religion. It is politics that drives everything. So Hamas leaders are driven by politics. They made political decision to invade Israel. Israel isn't driven by religion. It's just one of their cultural makeup that there is a big us and them. They are Palestinians, they are Jews, but the decisions are political. And uh, the political decision entails on both sides that there are civilians that will be killed. Now, the international regime on paper 
is set, set up so that uh, there are sanctions that can be applied that uh, and by sanctions I mean uh, even the um, allies of Israel like America can say to Israel listen open the water or let aid through to Gaza mm. but the international regime as we have it is failing it is the international regime does not care about human life. Africa is a case in point. Do, uh, Doc, I want the us to take. Regime, let's take a quick ad break, Doc. We're going to hmm. continue. Sorry to each and Jack there, but uh, we're going to take a quick ad break now, uh, just to wrap up the conversation on the other side of this. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. We're still in conversation with political analyst Dr. Jan Fenter talking uh, you know, to us about the history between the two Middle Eastern countries. This is Israel and Palestine and is still with us uh, via Zoom. Doc, thanks very much uh, for staying on. As we conclude the uh, conversation, I mean, Doc, uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, children are making, I mean, and just general civilians, they are making their way down south, which is somewhat a dangerous journey, uh, you know, through a war zone. Uh, we're seeing quite a lot of countries divided in this. You did touch on the issue of the United States being an ally to Israel. But uh, here in the African continent, there's quite a lot of division. Uh, South Africa is saying is for Palestine, and we're seeing the Kenya, the Ghanas, are uh, actually siding with Israel. I mean, what's your take on that? It has a root in South, the South African case has a root in the struggle history where the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the PLO, actually helped the ANC uh, in certain ways. So, we have a long memory, the ANC has a long memory, and we will stand by the allies that was made a long time ago. Some other countries in uh, Africa have uh, religious connotations, and they also have Kind of stronger relationships with the Western um, agenda. So Africa is quite often split uh, on various issues. And this issue is no uh, stranger to that fact. Uh, I think that um, we are talking about Pan-Africanism and so on, but the various uh, political necessities of African countries often makes a strong case for divisions on in the continent. Mm. Dr. Fenter, um, I, I mean, as uh, we are wrapping up the conversation, uh, we know that, uh, as I said earlier on, that, uh, you know, um, Israel has announced its invasion, it, intentions to invade uh, Gaza there. Um, um, are we likely to see uh, some sort of mediation, uh, you know, from uh, um, international groups, I mean, the UN, the European Union also, even African Union also just to, um, and also including the United Nations, just to come up with uh, solutions on how to uh, deal with this crisis. Because, you know, ultimately we are seeing lives lost there. Are we likely to see this conflict, uh, as we said, that it's been going on for centuries, uh, you know, coming to an end of some sort? I think that uh, the groups that you've mentioned is already 
they are already busy mediating. They are already, already um, expressing their opinions to their various allies. And I think at a certain stage in the future, uh, there will be a approach to a peace process. But I don't think it will be soon. Mm. I think that for now, war and conflict will continue in that region. And unfortunately, civilians, women and children will bear the brunt of that situation. Dr. Fenter, thanks very much uh, for taking the time. I actually wanted to pick your brain on uh, one question, but unfortunately we ran out of time. Uh, you know, I've been hearing some of your colleagues saying that, uh, uh, you know, what is currently happening now uh, with the conflict will have far more reaching consequences, especially for Israel in the long run. But uh, I will definitely, uh, you know, have you on the show as uh, this conflict uh, rages on. We hope that we will see solutions in this regard. Much appreciated for coming this evening. Thank you so much. Now, many countries have come out to say they stand against conflict, uh, you know, with the South African government choosing to stand with Palestine. Uh, what is your take on South Africa's stance on the conflict? Because this has rubbed off uh, many uh, the wrong way. We hope uh, that uh, you will definitely engage with us in, in that regard. That's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. You can call or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. For myself, Tabo Malukwani and the rest of the team, Mas Chabakobola has your primetime news up next. Good night and thank you for watching.